Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So um, welcome to the today's webinar. It's called AI and Robotics Industrial Transformation, Leveraging Hong Kong Unique Advantage to Build a Robotic Journey in Asia. My name is Andy Wong. I'm from Inmes Hong Kong. And together myself, um, we have my colleague who is Ms. Kiyoko Hashiba-san, who's based in Tokyo. Uh, myself and Ms. Hashiba-san will be the host for today's webinar. Before, so the next slide is to, um, for today's, uh, we have a, uh, Honor to have a five guest speaker, uh, Professor Liu Ming, who is the uh, acting head of Robotics and Autonomous System Trust, uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, Guangzhou, Director of Intelligent Autonomous Driving Center, Associate Director of Department of Electronics and Computer Engineering, Computer Science and Engineering. So uh, we are very happy for um, Professor Liu to be the guest speaker. And follow that will be Dr. Crystal Fogg, Director of Science and Technology Park Platform and from Science and Technology Park. And also uh, Mr. Ronald Yip, um, who's the Sales Director for Hong Kong and Macau from SoftBank Robotics Hong Kong. And then Mr. Albert Lam, Chief Marketing Officer from Lovotel Robotics. And then the last speaker will be Mr. Roy Lim, who's the Vice President of Dongheng Automation Investment. Um, for today, I would like, to, on behalf of Invest Hong Kong, would like to thank you, uh, the two co-organizers co and six supporting uh, seven supporting organizations. Um, for the co-organizer, we thank you very much for Hong Kong Science and Technology Park and also Hong Kong Trade and Development Council for providing all the um, tremendous support for us. And for the supporting organization, including the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, the Japan External Trade Organization Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Japanese Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Japan Robot Association, iRobot Network Forum, and the two um, economic trade office, one from Tokyo and also one from Bangkok. For today's uh, agenda, so it will follow, start with uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Liu. Uh, his topic will be about uh, robotics innovation in Hong Kong. Uh, all the speakers will be around 50 minutes. I think that would be a challenge for those speakers because they have uh, so much content. They have to squeeze the content from 30 minutes to 50 minutes. And then uh, after Professor Liu will be uh, Dr. Crystal Ford, topic about overview of robotic development in Hong Kong, followed by Mr. Ronald Yip, um, topics is around Japanese robot company, how to leverage Hong Kong for global expansion. And then Mr. Albert Lam, talking about the dog, the robot dog use case in construction, and by Roy Lim about the deployment of smart factory in Hong Kong. So, um, with, and then for after those uh, five speakers, there will be 10 to 15 minutes, depends on the timing for the question and answer, and then will be moderated by myself and also by my colleague, uh, Hashiba Sa. Um, without further delay, then uh, let me uh, start with uh, Professor Liu. I hand over the channel to Professor Liu. Uh, today, I will quickly introduce the, uh, the problem of robotic uh, perception, especially from the autonomous driving to uh, autonomous uh, logistics. Uh, also, uh, this is a, a kind of a summary report of what we have been uh, doing in research uh, in robotics uh, with the Intelligent Autonomous Driving Center of uh, Hong Kong UST. Uh, when we talk about autonomous driving, basically everyone Will, has, uh, will have a kind of uh, image uh, or expectation of the future. It's definitely not something like this a technical term. They will have kind of an image, right? An image probably like the, the, the video we show uh, here uh, on the screen. And uh, the autonomous driving vehicles, actually they can coordinate each other and everything move uh, totally uh, safe. And uh, there's no accidents and all the planning and uh, the, the motion of the vehicles are well planned. So that's probably what uh, you, are, uh, you can expect or what you can want to imagine uh, about the future life. Um, our research on the autonomous driving actually go along with that direction. Uh, in the past 10 years, we have been working with the first autonomous uh, car in the, uh, Europe. Also, we work on the first autonomous uh, driving uh, bus in, in China. And also we developed the first autonomous driving vehicle in Hong Kong and also the uh, first autonomous driving boat uh, in Hong Kong. 
so nowadays we found that the uh, autonomous uh, logistic would be one of the main uh, driving force uh, before the so-called L4 level, that means the fully autonomous uh, level, uh, high-speed autonomous driving. Uh, there must be something else. Uh, we call that a low-speed driving technology that will be used mostly uh, for the last mile delivery of the security and the surveillance, but also the uh, barrel house uh, usage. Um, that's based on the, the large amount of needs and the increment of the requirements for the, uh, uh, for the logistic. Um, we, it has been reported by these uh, big players, big, uh, especially the e-commerce uh, e players, that in three to five years, every day probably it's like uh, it's a double 11 a a festival. It's very special in, in China that everybody will do some e-shopping on that day. Uh, last year, actually, the uh, orders per day is already over 1 billion packages need to be sent out. But um, the fact is, not only in, in China, also happens in Japan, uh, the, the working age among the total population actually is dropping sharply. And that means there won't be enough uh, laborers to, to do the actual work for sending the packages. So we need to see what kind of uh, key solutions or key technologies uh, can uh, come true in the near future. Uh, for example, uh, that can help the automated uh, logistics. That includes several aspects, including the 3D pose estimation and mapping. That means the robot needs to know where, uh, where it is, like the autonomous vehicle needs to know where it is. And also, uh, not only for indoor, uh, not only for outdoor, uh, also for indoor, we need the, the indoor mapping and localization technology for further uh, logistic uh, of the package delivery. Uh, also, we need to test the system uh, in more realistic uh, environment, uh, including this uh, 3D mapping of a more complex scenario, uh, et cetera. So that means uh, we need a bunch of engineering modules. These engineering modules, including the data and the logic system and the human machine interface, we call the HMI. And uh, based on these uh, commands, uh, we develop the core modules for autonomous driving and uh, these uh, technology needs support uh, to do these core modules. So especially uh, the, the part in the, in the, in the red uh, square uh, has the following uh, concepts from the perception to decision making and the planning control. And the perception will be supported by sensors and decision and prediction will be supported by computing and the uh, planning and the control uh, will be supported by the car body technologies. So I will give you uh, several examples about the, the technology uh, context. So firstly, from the perception, uh, we need to work on the, the so-called 3D navigation to the visual navigation and the real-time uh, perception so that you know how the 3D world uh, looks like. And then the car can navigate around not only by LiDAR, but also navigate around by the camera system and can detect the obstacles in real time uh, and to see what happened in, the, in real life. So uh, we already got several awards on, along this uh, direction in the, in the past. And uh, more specifically, when we create this uh, 3D map, we can even use some handheld device. We move around in the environments that will generate the 3D map uh, on the fly uh, in real time. And then we have the uh, 3D analysis uh, about the, uh, the environment, uh, not only from the uh, uh, LiDAR data, also from the visual data and shown on the right side. So every picture will be uh, converted, or we, we learn from the picture so that every pixel will be labeled with different semantic meanings. And finally, we will, uh, when the car is moving on the, on the street or in the confined areas uh, from the camera, uh, both from the camera and from the LiDAR, we can have a better understanding of the environment. Another thing is that we will generate um, originally 3D representation of the environment. So when we take such kind of a sensor set on top right and put the, the sensor on top of the car, and when we drive around a city area, uh, that will construct a 3D representation of the, the environment uh, in real time. 
So in the video, you can see the 3D model we created that can also serve uh, not only for the autonomous driving, can also serve the uh, smart city uh, projects. And uh, further, uh, because we have so many, so much contents, I will accelerate a little bit. So based on what we uh, get from the perception, uh, we need to also work on the decision making. That means we know when to stop the car, uh, when to accelerate, when to do the detour. And we first test everything in a simulation. This simulation, we can submit different kinds of weather, different seasons, a different time of day. So at every experiment, we can change the background uh, weather and uh, uh, other situations uh, freely. So that during one test, you can see uh, even we are on the green lights and others are breaking the red lights and we can simulate uh, such uh, cases. So that we can have safe interactions with the pedestrians with other uh, vehicles uh, on the road. So when we put the system on real, you can see that in the middle, the black vehicle is auto fully autonomous driving. We don't even have a driver's seat. So there's no driver or operator on board. The car can handle the complex environments. And we already put this in use in Foxconn and in Huawei, uh, all these factories already. Okay. For the planning and execution, I will um, skip this part. And uh, we should know that it's all supported by other sensors and also supported by different kinds of uh, computing units and different, uh, also supported by the car body uh, design and, uh, and construction. Here, here you can see that uh, we also uh, put a testing environments. Uh, we also construct testing environments so that we can do the experiments under a, a 5G supported environment. So uh, that can handle the complexity or different uh, uh, specialty uh, special environments. So when we put this in use, uh, there are several application uh, domains. For example, this is a last mile delivery system. We collaborated with the SF Express, so there a postman can use the cell phone to call uh, some driving car for them uh, to help them with the last mile delivery. And the car can be uh, ordered to different uh, dedicated locations. Uh, the, the car will come here and wait so that when the postman gets the packages, they can directly put the package on the car and they can keep on working uh, with the customer and all the delivery will be further handled by this autonomous vehicle. And that's also helped the, the so-called the fourth uh, industrial revolution, right? We have automated off loading system and the continuous running uh, logistic system and the remote surveillance uh, system uh, to, to connect with the ERP and WMS system, etc. And we have a sizing, uh, you can call that golf cart. And uh, we have a multiple vehicle collaborating uh, so that can serve the um, uh, sizing purpose and different uh, landscape, uh, different locations. And we can also use that for food and package last mile delivery. And when we put some order in a, in a park and uh, the vehicle may help to fetch the, the food and fetch the packages from the shop, and then it will deliver to the to the final customer. Uh, everything will be handled by an autonomous car or without any driver uh, on board. And we have been testing uh, this system over the past three years, uh, especially for low speed driving under different weather condition, etc. And uh, with extended applications at different uh, areas. And here are a list of uh, vehicles we have been uh, trying and working. Okay, a last uh, message is um, uh, when we talk about the products and the future opportunities, uh, the low vehicle um, actually can facilitate our life uh, a lot. So that's uh, what the autonomous models can, can bring to us. But the one uh, consideration is the, the cost. Right? Uh, so from the millions of US dollar uh, cost to 100,000 Hong Kong dollar, we are almost there. Um, from the Hong Kong uh, USD, uh, now we are establishing several sub-organizations uh, to conduct this kind of research. I range from the IADC, uh, which I'm uh, leading. Also, there are several spin-off companies uh, like the Unity Drive Innovation, NLIC, uh, et cetera. Okay, so um, here on the last page. Um, at the beginning, uh, beginning, we talk about the invasions of the future autonomous driving life. And when we really put the autonomous vehicle 
onto the working side, you can see that people are getting very curious about the car to see whether it will stop, right? You can see the date is about 2019 uh, January. And we first put the car uh, onto the industrial park. Everybody is quite curious. But uh, nowadays, um, even uh, the end of um, uh, 2019, you see everybody is quite used to this car just move around without any driver on board. And that takes some time for the whole side to, to uh, to accept that the autonomous system is really helping and the future is coming. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. If you have a further questions, you can scan this uh, barcode to, to see our websites and get more information. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Liu. I think it's very exciting. Particularly the first video, I like it very much. The people that the car walk around <laughs> and then run around and then I think that by the time my wife is going on the street driving, I think it's more safer because uh, no way that he can hit me. Um, uh, by the way, um, I think um, it's very exciting to know that there's about 250 people on online right now uh, watching this okay. webinar. So it's exciting. Thank you so much, um, Professor, Lee, yeah. for, Professor yeah, Liu. Thank you. thank you so much. And then uh, for the next speaker will be uh, Dr. Crystal Falk. And then I just hand over to Dr. Crystal Falk. Thank you. Hello, uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Crystal from uh, Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. Okay, so today uh, I will provide you an overview of robotics development in Hong Kong. So a little bit introduction of Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks Corporation is actually uh, uh, supported by the Hong Kong government which is a science part to support the innovation and technology development in Hong Kong. So uh, this is the agenda today, and I will go through uh, about five sections. So the first one is to talk about the driving force for Hong Kong in uh, robotics development. So from these two charts, you can easily see that uh, Hong Kong and Japan are facing the same challenge, which is the life expectancy and the growing uh, aging population. So if you can compare Hong Kong to Japan, actually we are just the same. We are the, in the top five countries or region that is having the highest aging population. So the problem being to us is like um, the workforce is actually decreasing. So uh, right now it's about 1.12 million of people, uh, which is over 60 into 1.5, but uh, in 234, it will be coming 2.28 million. So it's become like one fourth of the Hong Kong uh, population. So we could easily foresee that most of the skillful workers are approaching the retiring age soon. So these are the driving force and the key that why we need to uh, bring up certain kind of new technology such as automation and robotics. So some case sharing is like a logistics industry. This is still one of the key industry in Hong Kong. So you can see that for the traditional operation, it is highly labor intensive. And also uh, we got lots of uh, stationary machinery, which makes the labor skillful workers to work on. But how that is impact, uh, impacting us is, is the whole process is inefficient and expensive. And it is not easy to scale up and hardly depending on the labor that we could find out in the market. And recently we have uh, one good company from China, which is Git Plus. This is a, uh, one of the biggest uh, logistics uh, smart warehouse company in China. And they are working a lot of different kinds of robotics, which help us to automate the warehouse solution. And the reason that why Git Plus will consider Hong Kong is because they would like to go out to the global market through Hong Kong as a stepping stone. But you will know that in China, it's easy to make a smart warehouse because space is usually not a big problem. But what about in Hong Kong? So Hong Kong is just like Japan. Space is always a problem. 
So it, when they're developing certain type of new solution in Hong Kong, what they need to do is how they could still provide the high throughput. And at the same time, they have to minimize the scale and also uh, upgrading the efficiency that helping certain kind of industry. So this is one example is helping a warehouse for a convenience store in Hong Kong. And you can see that they have used a lot of different kind of robots in order to build up the uh, automatic warehouse for this uh, uh, convenience store warehouse. And in construction is even in a more uh, difficult situation because uh, in construction industry, actually most of the tasks, they need high skill, uh, highly skillful workers. So you can see that Hong Kong is actually having almost the most high rise building in the world. So right now it's already over 9,000 high rise buildings. And at the same time, the labor costs keep increasing throughout the past three years. And the ratio that increase is like 27%. And also most of the workers right now are already in the age of 50 or even above. So you can imagine that just in 10 years time, 40% of the workers are actually in the retiring age. And finally, 60% of the construction project are not yet up to standard. So this is why the construction industry is heavily looking into robotics and automation. So one homegrown example is uh, this company called Respect. So what they are doing is on a, a facade inspection using the drone. The reason that they develop this kind of uh, uh, automatic inspection technologies is because of uh, most of the high rise building in Hong Kong, if they really want to do the construction, uh, do the inspection, uh, they need a lot of time and also it's not that easy. And that's why Zhong is one uh, uh, way that helping us to do the inspection more frequently and more accurately. So this company is right now going quite well and their project is not only for commercial buildings, but also a lot of projects for the Hong Kong government. And another one is how that we could really uh, uh, downscale the workers' level because if we could make the manual work to become semi-automatic, uh, automatic, actually the skill set for the workers could be uh, easily diminished. And that's why uh, the welding robot come, uh, uh, come across these days because uh, what the workers has to do is just control or uh, simply program a little bit for the uh, welding robot. They don't really have to learn uh, throughout the whole welding process. So this is one way that how the construction industry is uh, downscaling the uh, skill set for the workers right now. So the final area that I would like to share is about the smart manufacturing. So uh, when people think about Hong Kong, actually no one will think about manufacturing. But right now, actually, the, the Hong Kong government is uh, pushing quite a lot for the reindustrialization. So what they are supporting this uh, initiative is to help in uh, investing in a lot of capex. For example, the building construction as well as the renovation of the factory, and also help to create more value add to the uh, uh, production. And we also encourage the local consumption in order to provide a stable supply chain. And uh, we got a lot of funding to support the R&D activities within the uh, reindustrialization initiative. And more importantly, uh, we are not encouraging people to produce certain uh, general products. We hope that those manufacturing in Hong Kong is mainly uh, focused on some uh, uh, high value add products and also a highly automated uh, process. So I think that uh, one of the speakers today will further discuss the technology very soon. And what we got from Science Park is actually the uh, uh, facilities. So we are having several new uh, industrial buildings to come up soon. And uh, we will have a certain uh, theme for all these buildings. For example, uh, for new material uh, development and production, uh, medical device or equipment, as well as electronics. So all these new industrial buildings will be set up uh, 
and build according to the needs and requirement. For example, if you need compressed air or high power supply, all these will be built in within these new buildings. So uh, as I mentioned, Hong Kong is in a very special location within the uh, global footprint. So many people will consider Hong Kong as the gateway to the Greater Bay Area. And that's true because, uh, for example, if you want to recruit tenants into the China market, it's not that easy. But if you just want them to stay in Hong Kong, it's actually quite uh, easy to do so. So Hong Kong could uh, actually be a gateway for companies that are looking for a bigger market within China. So uh, for Hong Kong Science Park, we also have several footprint. Uh, uh, we got the science park, which is holding the R&D companies. So right now we got almost uh, over thousands. But if you are working on uh, any kind of manufacturing, we got the uh, industrial X days. And just opposite to Shenzhen uh, Innovation and Technology Park, we got uh, a new site up, which is the Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation and Technology Park. So two technology parks, one in Hong mm -hmm. Kong and one in China, are just facing opposite together. So you could imagine that if you want to get into the Greater Bay Area for Hong Kong, this space is very special. And finally, I would like to talk about the uh, support from the Hong Kong and Science Technology Park. So right now we have already over a thousand technology companies within the park coming from 23 different countries or regions. And for the working population, uh, this is now over 10,000 R&D professionals within the park. And also we got several unicorns coming up, which are all homegrown. And more importantly, we always want to help companies to grow. So investment is a really uh, big uh, support to them. So if your company is in the growing stage and you are looking for investment, actually our investment team could help you to find a lot of resources and capital ventures. So no matter which stage that you're in for your company, actually we got a very comprehensive incubation program to support. So uh, you can look at the left-hand side uh, if you are just an individual or a small company with an idea, you could already join our step program. So once you set up the company, we got the incubation program for uh, three or four years. And then once you graduate, if your company could uh, still go into another stage, we are also have uh, three different acceleration programs to support. And even though you are really success, and you would like to expand even further. We got the elite program to help you to grow to the next stage as well. So all these programs are, I think, properly fit into companies in any scale. And also, uh, we also have companies to uh, uh, drive the market adoption. So we have good uh, relationship with government departments and some uh, really well-known corporates uh, worldwide. So we always introduce our park companies to all these partners and to encourage them to adopt uh, uh, the technology solutions uh, homegrown in Hong Kong. And uh, at the bottom, those are uh, some facilities that we are supporting different companies. So for example, if you want to look for uh, biomedical uh, uh, development, you don't really need to invest uh, in the, all the machineries because we have certain uh, communal facilities to support the companies to work on their own R&D. So finally uh, is the uh, fundraising platform. So as I mentioned before, uh, Sanfa is also one of the investors. So if you want us to invest in your company, we will do co-invest with other uh, partners as well. So right now the record is like one to 10, which means that if Sanfa is going to invest $1, uh, we could uh, usually find another $10 from the market. So it is actually a good ratio that helping company to do the fundraising. And also if you want to uh, connect with the uh, uh, capital venture network, uh, we also have plenty of uh, programs that you could easily join in. So this is a brief introduction of the uh, uh, robotics phenomenon in Hong Kong. So if you have any question, we could answer in the Q&A section. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Christopher, for the uh, very exciting sharing about the um, the cases about the supply chain, uh, the robot in the use in the supply chain, and also robot use in the construction area, and then um, the kind of the uh, benefit and also the uh, kind of offering from Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. The next speaker is uh, Mr. Ronald Yip, who is from the SoftBank Robotics Hong Kong. And I'm, um, I met with uh, Ronald before, and then he represent the, uh, one of the uh, SoftBank robot, uh, which is for disinfection. I think that would be a good for uh, learning more about how he um, uh, used Hong Kong for the, uh, the product expansion globally. Thank you. Doctor, I hand over to uh, uh, Mr. Ronald Yip. Thank, Thank you, you, Andy. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> good afternoon. So let's wait for the slide first. Okay, so uh, today our topic is uh, uh, is talking about our Japanese uh, robotics company, how it leverage Hong Kong for global expansion. Okay, uh, I'm going. I'm not going to make a very formal presentation, but instead, um, I'm going to tell you a story, uh, which is related to software and robotics Hong Kong and the. Uh, uh, collaboration with uh, a local Hong Kong company. So, uh, but before I'm telling you the story, uh, I have to introduce, I have to introduce about the software robotics Hong Kong. Okay. So uh, I think most of uh, you understand and heard about software and robotics, and uh, maybe you don't know about our uh, investor or major shareholders. Uh, of course, uh, um, uh, the chairman of uh, software group, uh, Master Masayoshi, is uh, one of the major shareholder. And actually, there are two other major shareholders. Uh, Mr. Ma Yun, uh, he is the chairman of uh, Alibaba Group, and Mr. Kok, Kok Tai Ming. Uh, he is the uh, chairman of the first point group. So uh, they, these three uh, gentlemen has the dream is to, uh, is to make the robots to help the people uh, for all the tough jobs uh, in the future. So that's why they formed the company of uh, software and robotics. And actually starting from 2016, uh, some products uh, were launched out to the market. The first one is from the right, right hand side. That that is a pepper, which is a concierge uh, uh, porter, uh robot, and actually uh, it can uh, interact with human. And the middle one is a uh, Lao. Lao is the uh, majorly developed for the uh, STEM uh, usage. Uh, probably in the school, uh, you find that there are so many uh, school which uh, Lao is inside, and. And in 2019, uh, we have the first uh, surfacing robot, which is called WIS, which is the um, left-hand side product. It is the autonomous uh, victim cleaning uh, robot. So uh, as you may know, uh, Sopan uh, Group, uh, there is a vision fund. Actually, there are so many portfolio companies uh, uh, invest by the vision fund. So Sopan Robotics uh, utilize the uh, resources from the vision funds because there are so many new technologies uh, company and we integrate those uh, new technology and make the product. So uh, of course, uh, uh, for Pepper and for now is not a, a, a service robot, but uh, we integrate with the navigation system. We integrate with the cleaning uh, uh, system. So uh, the first one, this is the uh, integrate product, and we want to launch it as the, uh, to the market as a robot as a service. And we are do we were doing the go to market all over the world. So uh, uh, except for the cleaning uh, industry, actually we are targeting on on construction. Uh, food and beverage and office use or concierge or cashier as well. And starting from uh, 2019, uh, software robotics expanded its uh, uh, network. Uh, we have uh, the global footprint we have uh, in not only the Japan, but also the APAT. APAT include Hong Kong office, which uh, which I was uh, which I am working on in it, and also China, uh, Korea, Singapore, and uh, Australia. 
And of course, not only APEC area, but also the North America, uh, we have uh, U, uh, United States, we have office in United States, and we have uh, offices in uh, Europe as well. So uh, starting from 2019, we were, we were trying to uh, launch the robot as a service all over the world. So uh, as I mentioned, this waste is the first uh, uh, Wickham cleaning robot and actually also the first uh, robot as a service business model. And in our Hong Kong office, it is our first product to be launched uh, in 2019. So uh, um, I was, I joined uh, Software Robotics Hong Kong in August of uh, 2019, and actually we start launch to the market at the end of 2019. So uh, in, First three months, we got a very good result. Uh, of course, at that moment, uh, as I mentioned, the first uh, Wickham cleaning robot and the first uh, LAAS model, uh, which we never heard in Hong Kong, but we launched uh, at that moment. And and we have uh, another achievement is uh, was that uh, we were get, we were the highest achievement uh, sales office in APEC region. So our uh, uh, all over APEC, uh, other office uh, like uh, Singapore, like Australia. So Hong Kong achieved the uh, best results. This is some uh, uh, photos or uh, some information about what uh, where did we launch. Uh, for example, this is a benchmark uh, cases. Uh, this is a benchmark case uh, in Hong Kong uh, International Airport. So uh, our first customer and actually our first airport customer all over the world is Hong Kong International Airport. So uh, they adopt, uh, they're willing to adopt new technologies. And at that moment, uh, the COVID-19 just start and they are happy to deploy uh, uh, waste into airport like the uh, waiting area and the check-in areas. And the second uh, uh, target that we had uh, we had uh, a trip with uh, hospitality sectors. Uh, we not only deployed to uh, four star and five star, five star hotel in Hong Kong and Macau, and and also uh, we deploy our uh, uh, waste into some quarantine uh, hotels as well. So uh, of course, uh, some casino is trying to uh, use uh, waste as a POC case. You see the meat. The middle uh, photo, uh, that is the smoking area inside the casino. Then in Hong Kong, we also achieve uh, uh, to launch, uh, to deploy waste into different uh, shopping mall or office lobbies. So uh, uh, the largest shopping malls in Hong Kong, there were uh, around 40 to 50. So probably we had uh, maybe uh, one third or one half uh, or, or 50% of the shopping mall they already absorb uh, waste and show it to the public. And probably waste was using, uh, was, was using in the entrance uh, of each shopping mall. For other uh, public areas like uh, med medical clinic uh, force, uh, the exit to MTL, uh, Chinese restaurant, uh, which is which was a very uh, a lovely story uh, because uh, that was a, a wedding ceremony, wedding dinner, of which is the visitor or the guest to do the uh, welcome cleaning, and of course at uh, MTR station as well. So we did very good job uh, at that moment. Uh, it was around uh, March, April of uh, two thousand twenty last year. So uh, our customers uh, or our clients uh, was happy to show that, so that they use a uh, uh, waste and they show all the news uh, waste photo in onto their uh, social media page. However, we have a uh, we have we were facing some hurdles at that moment, uh, especially uh, the COVID lighting was tough. Uh, the city was the uh, lockdown and the budget of our customers was fixed. So uh, they don't want to pay more. They don't want to uh, spend more money on uh, 
on everything except disinfection. Okay, so uh, most of the most of our customer ask whether we can do the disinfection instead of a Wickham cleaning only. So uh, uh, for us, we have to react very fast and we have to discuss with our headquarters, uh, Software Robotics Japan, to see whether we have uh, uh, some additional feature that we can add to this. So at that moment, uh, around uh, May and June, uh, we start the discussion every week uh, or even uh, twice a week. So uh, different location of uh, Software and Robotics uh, offices, uh, we try to input some uh, ideas so uh, you can see the left hand side, the idea from uh, Japan, uh, we add a, a sprayer and the middle and the right hand side, this is the idea in jet, uh, in jet from Software Robotics Hong Kong. Uh, we add some uh, diffuser on it. The middle one is the two small uh, diffusers, but uh, uh, the right hand side is the larger one. Okay, so uh, we try to have a global meeting to discuss which one is the best uh, uh, method to do uh, to match our match with our customers. But uh, the previous night, so the fee uh, proposal was not good because we uh, received a very good proposal from an uh, from a Hong Kong lo local company. So uh, the this company is called Avalon and they provide a prototype with, when we discuss with them and they provide the prototype to us uh, within two months. That means around August uh, 2020 and actually uh, in September 2020, they can make a, a, the prototype can put it into some potential customer for POC as well. So uh, we, all, we immediately report to our Japan headquarters and finally uh, uh, our management was very happy to work closer with them. So uh, actually this, uh, uh, this, how to say, um, this infection uh, machine adding on waste is a professional grade disinfectant system, uh, which is, uh, uh, how to say, uh, SGS Hong Kong already has uh, uh, certified uh, its uh, performance. And, and we, at that moment, we start, we immediately start the, uh, uh, Go to market in Hong Kong as well. So uh, we tried several hotels. We try some. We try uh, some office buildings. Uh, we get some positive uh, feedback, and we do the go to market in Hong Kong. And of course, uh, for the local company, they immediately find the uh, uh, local supplier uh, to make the product as well. So uh, without, without working together with uh, this local company, I think at this moment, we're still uh, selling uh, the Wickham Cleaning Mobile only. But with this uh, uh, add-on fe feature or add-on module, right now we are, we are selling uh, this infection robot plus Wickham Cleaning features. So lastly, I, I would like to share why, uh, why did we uh, choose to cooperate with a Hong Kong company? So uh, I can say the first, time, uh, the first one is a very fast response time. So uh, when we had a, a lot of uh, internal discussion for what kind of feature uh, or what kind of module that we have to add to, um, to make the disinfection uh, features happen. Sorry. But uh, finally, a company, even they don't have any, uh, uh, we don't have uh, uh, invest any money to them, but they make a prototype to us and show us uh, with the potential customers as well. And a uh, second, uh, for such kind of uh, uh, product, uh, not only we have to make it fast, but also we have to find uh, our production partners. So uh, uh, whenever it is a, uh, go to market, there will be a very large scale. So uh, production is very important. So uh, this company cooperate with uh, uh, China, uh, Chinese manufacturer, uh, which is also a Hong Kong company as well. So, uh, and they make the product very good and, they, and it's, uh, how to say, it's ready to go to be go to market. And of course, uh, it's convenient to go to market because you know in Hong Kong we are easy to find some hotels, easy to find some office building for do the POC. And of course, uh, there are two more uh, advantages for working uh, with Hong Kong company. The first one is uh, 
very easy to expand the business in Pan China. So not only Hong Kong, uh, but also Macau, China, uh, mainland as well. And, at, and actually, uh, uh, is in Hong Kong, uh, it is easy for us to do the uh, international sales as well. So right now, our uh, disinfection module is promoting to not only Singapore, but also in Europe and Northern America. So uh, man, we can easily to make the voice. Uh, we can easily to draw the market attention. So that's why uh, finally at this moment, at, as of today, I can say uh, Sovereign Robotics Hong Kong uh, made a very good decision to work with a Hong Kong company for this kind of uh, uh, new product uh, global expansion. So that's the end of my uh, storytelling. So in case you have any question, you can ask me in the Q&A session. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Ronald Yip. I think um, exciting to know that you find a white partner in Hong Kong so that you can um, further enhance your product and then make it work in Hong Kong and also expansion to, to the proximity market like a uh, Panation. And the next speaker will be Mr. Albert Lam, uh, who's uh, from, I have to say how to pronounce his name. No, no, Novo Town. Novo Town. Mm. It's a French word. It's mm. a French word. New. Is it new? Yes. Okay. Thank you for educating me about the, the new French <laughs> word. And then he will talk about the um, robot dog. Let's see how smart is the dog. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Our uh, company name is Novota. Uh, Novota is old French, uh, always searching for something new. I think that is something that we all are searching for right now. And adopting robotics in construction is something that I'd like to share today. Uh, our company is uh, founded in 2019 and currently also under the incubation program in uh, Science Park. And uh, we aim to um, have more adoption of robotics around a lot of different scenarios and collaborating, SLAM, IoT, and 5G, and definitely with autonomous moving technology. And we are a all one-stop robotic solution company from planning, managing, building, and measure. And this is uh, definitely one of the es essential uh, essence that we are serving many of those enterprises in Hong Kong. And uh, definitely, I believe similar scenario uh, or service culture is also the same according to what is being served in Japan. And why I like to bring this up is because in today's adoption of robotics, planning stage is definitely one of the most important part in the actual successful deployment. After services is also something that we are serving well to our all kinds of different scenario of clients. And also with the Greater Bay, we have a lot of flexibility in terms of additional building up over the accessories and adopting local AI technology. Finally, last but not the least, is about data measurement. Adoption of enterprises in over robotics, they always need a lot of measurement of the usage and also the IoT sensors and other extended related technology devices. And in Hong Kong, construction has always been one of the major topic in terms of looking how fast the city is building up. And the coming up strategy in smart city, in a slide here, we can share some of our petrol robot then being used during the whole. So this is a project we work with EMSD, which is uh, also a government bureau over how to promote uh, robotics in terms of uh, in, in terms of construction. And uh, we have been the deployment over. We have been the deployment company over how to put this like a tank or rather like a jeep or SUV like of a robot in construction area. From a lot of, uh, on the screen, you can see a lot of sensors are being built inside this robot and they can check all the toxic or temperature and any kind of sensors you want to add into it. With two big eyes on the top of it, you will see thermal images and as well as a high density camera over 5G, as well as other way of transmitting all these images. 
So this is being deployed in a construction academy in Hong Kong. We call it the CIC Academy, and where they help uh, the teaching over all these uh, construction professionals. Okay, so this is something that uh, being used in academy, but also in actual construction. What I'm sharing also today is a uh, quadrupted robots in construction site. Uh, for this kind of robot, it is built without wheels, but with actual legs. So with this kind of leg, it can overcome this kind of like staircases or irregular condition of the road that is very common in construction site. So it is, looks very similar to many other uh, uh, corrupted uh, robot is that it can bear a lot of different kind of working condition. And on the top of it, we can get a hole of like VR camera or 5G router, sensors, all these kinds of things. And we are currently the partner for working with Polytechnic University in Hong Kong, making the first robot that is using this space and using it for an inspection scenario in construction site. And we see a lot of similar adoption of this kind of robot base in US as well as in Europe. And many of these utilization is at patrolling, inspection, and surveying, which is also very common in terms of a construction site. Secondly, thirdly, is that we also have disinfection robot being deployed across all these construction area, making sure that the, the, our combat against the COVID-19 is being well prepared. Another thing is that we also are working with a, another science park, robotic company, the NEO Robotics, which is actually working on a magnificent project, delivering heavy rocks and bricks across difficult working condition like staircase. So while the dog is doing inspection, we also need some tools to help our construction worker to move around with this kind of heavy construction material. And with the adoption of such robot, it can lift up to 120 kg across all these kind of star, stair climbing, well, 150 actually. And we are also adopting the 5G remote control and monitoring so that the robot can be controlled remotely. Excuse me. And this is how we do the COVID in Hong Kong. So, and uh, from here, you can see that the robot itself is actually have different conveyor kind of design that can climb up and down staircases. More importantly, is that you can see the cabin on the top is actually balanced out while the carry upon the staircase. So the rock will not fall out. And that is very important for safety concern. Yep. So you can see that the design of it is very innovative, that it has actually four conveyor in between. And it can turn in very condensed area. As you know that in staircase, it actually is very narrow and you need to have a very robust of the moving capability in terms of moving. Remote control is already being realized in our R&D. And secondly, is that it can also be as safe as emergency stop when it has certain uh, encounter of human being. So you can see the sensor is actually very sensitive. So in construction, not only holding heavy things, but also safetyness is something that we also look into.
And on the next slide, you will see that actually we have five demonstrations. We can put a lot of heavy sand, bag, sand, rock, and also brick, and then we can just walk in front of it, leaving hand free for all this construction moving past up and down. So this is actually being taken place at on an actual construction site and it helped our construction worker move along all these kind of heavy loaded materials up and down the without elevator. So currently this is also being one of the first 5G project using in construction uh, in Hong Kong because it has been submitted for a Hong Kong 5G uh, subsidy program in uh, offering from the Hong Kong government that we are promoting 5G and uh, this is going to be uh, if it is successful it could be widely adopted in all the construction not only in building but also this construction. Okay so um, Upon above all these kind of projects that we have done, the adoption in Hong Kong over robotics has been very, very fast for the past 24 months. Especially over the COVID-19 period, uh, we find that there have been a lot of works are not suitable for human, mm -hmm. which it could not be realized before the COVID. And we can see that it's gonna be not only in the healthcare sector that we have projects, that is helping out our frontline colleagues, but also in terms of public sector, how to do it in more efficient way and in a more safe, secure way. And just like in Hong Kong, we have a lot of engineers and services support that can help adoption being smooth. And also if it is across, even the technology is actually from across the border, from Japan or in Europe or any other countries, we have the capability to make sure that our client have the localization capability as well as a software development capability. These are some of the projects we adopt, not only in the uh, public sector, but also in commercial sector like restaurant and hotel. And I believe education is also one of the important sector that we can uh, work between across country of adoption over how to use STEM or you know, making sure our new generation have robots capability. And uh, that's why in Hong Kong, there are so many enterprise eager to adopt robots. And I think that cross-border technology can always bring more value to us. Uh, last but not the least, uh, we are welcome if you have the chance to come to our office in Science Park. And I think that you will find a lot more technology and fun things here. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Albert Lam. I think it's exciting to hear that you have different products, right? It's been being um, innovated or, or R&D done in Hong Kong, particularly using the Science Park facility. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think the next speaker is the, Mr. Roy Lim. Um, I know Roy um, quite long, maybe a year. <laughs> so I, um, he will be talking about the uh, automation, uh, how the robot is being used in the automation industry, particular maybe in Hong Kong, also in China, right? So I hand it over to um, Roy. Thank okay. you. Yes. Hello, everyone. So our company is called Tongheng Automation. And as the name suggested, it's an automation company and our clients involved are mostly factories in China, uh, Foxconn or Tesla. It's all these robotic arms that you can imagine moving things around and using servo motors to, um, to convey products from side to side. So we have worked with Mitsubishi for 42 years. And now we are globally the largest distributor of their products. And let's talk a little bit about how we can use our uh, daily herd AI robotics 
IoT, all these kind of jargons. What can, how can we use them in a factory so that we are bringing these factories finally to Hong Kong? So as you can see here, we are talking about invention. Invention is something that is new, that is AI, that is robotics. And on the very end, the other end of it is implementation. Where can we find the most amount of implementation? It is definitely in a factory. So in between, we will want to build a bridge, which is how to use these AI and robotics and put them in actual use. So what are AIs? What can we use in the factories? We have facial recognition, we have search algorithm, we have targeted marketing, we have autopilot technology, we have uh, seen a lot today, and chatbots, and even big data analysis for disease control, which is uh, very uh, important in the last, uh, in last year. So we are also talking about deep AI, strong AI that we can uh, learn itself to adopt to your environment. So here is an example. We used to uh, build some automatic, automatic line for, uh, for factories of uh, building watches. They might use a CNC machine to build watch, but at the end of that line, they have to polish their watch. So you need to bring that watch onto a 2000 RPM wheels. And that wheels is actually like, oops. That wheel is actually very fast. So if you slip, it will just fly out and it hit your forehead and you die immediately. Or if uh, the uh, while you are polishing, there are actually a lot of dust coming out. If the concentration of these dust gets to a certain level, the entire factory might explode. So all these problems we have uh, automated into one robotic uh, facilities. So first we use robots to polish the entire stuff. And then we put these watches onto a very high resolution camera. And by learning what is a good product and what is a bad product, we finally can automate the entire inspection. So no more uh, workers needs to be watching very closely every day. Also, we are building a lot of predictive maintenance uh, with sound, because as you might have uh, learned how a Ferrari sound, how a Mercedes-Benz sound, it's, it actually has a lot of patterns that you can recognize. Uh, we might be able to recognize some of it, like, uh, like the picture in the upper left corner. The worker can recognize a problem when they hear some very specific sound. This can be done by AI very efficiently. It can even predict something that is going to happen three months from now. Of course, uh, if we are talking about manufacturing, there are music and manufacturing as well. It's quite amazing how AI can be composing themselves. But of course, AI always follows rules. So what we are doing is, uh, we are building it to do repetitive stuff. We are asking it to learn from our rules and it cannot compose like Beethoven. It cannot draw a picture. It cannot write stories. Okay, so with these kind of tools, let's move a little bit on to robotics. Now we have all these algorithms. We have written programs. Now we are actually affecting the world. How do we do that? We replace all these dirty, dull, dangerous, dear, uh, problem, problematic work with robots. It will just keep working day by day and then it can uh, remove all the unnecessary uh, human work. For example, we in Shanghai, 
And as you can see, this is all the robot is doing, moving the iPad onto the conveyor belt, move it onto the test station, back and forth. They used to hire a lot of workers just to do this. It's very boring, it's meaningless. We should be replacing these. And as we talk, this is how you call it now in 2021. This is still the, the uh, real factory, what you're looking at. So we are uh, quickly replacing all these factories by the next, this machine. And we are removing dangerous work. We are making even better products than humans. Now, can you, yes. A lot of robots actually can do things that is beyond what we imagine. Of course, you can paint, you can, uh, you can plaster, you can do a lot of automatic, automatic work in the building. Um, and then now we also want these robots to know about the environment. So how do we do that? We are spending a lot of time finding some sensors so that the robots and all these algorithms that we wrote can actually do something meaningful. So first of all, we use vision. So an inspection rover is always used. We take a high resolution camera, we move it around in an area, we read the, the text, we read the meters, and then we interpret all these data into a digitalized form. And then we upload it into the cloud. Now we have a lot of analog data, which we could not be uh, interpret in the computer before. Now, how do we use these? For example, here we are looking at the pizza machine. It is just making pizza with robots and it is uh, cooking it, it is putting the ketchup on it. Very simple technology. But at the end of the pizza, uh, manufacturing, we are actually putting the pizza onto an oven. And there are the, uh, the ovens are all on the truck. There are 50 ovens in one truck, and this truck will uh, deliver it directly to the customers. And six minutes before the truck arrive, which is uh, done by the GPS, we will turn on the oven so that the Pizza is crispy and hot. So these are some very tiny information that we can obtain from our environment that makes the entire process completely different and better. We're here at Zoom. So let's look at a few more very uh, magical sensors that we are looking at. Um, Wileyet is a completely wireless limitless battery sensor. It can sense temperature, it can sense humidity, whatever you put on it, but it is taking energy from the Wi-Fi signal. So all we need to do is put this onto a machine in the factory, and then it will just continuously work forever and ever. So we don't have to pull the wires, we don't have to uh, install them. All we need is wireless technology. This has just received 200 million from SoftBank uh, like three days ago. And why charge? We are also talking about how we can transmit more energy uh, wirelessly. This, you can transmit power without a lot of uh, power loss in a 10 meter distance. So this is also very important for a very big factory where we need to put sensors in a lot of places. Also, we are looking at autonomous cranes, which we need a lot of information from visual uh, cameras. We need sensors, we need uh, weight 
of the entire crane. So these are examples that we need very a lot of sensors for. And then we will play uh, this video as well. We're looking at movable floors that actually are installed on the factory ground and will just move around all by itself magnetically. So this is the future of conveying. We are talking about 2D conveyors, not just uh, one dimensional anymore. And here we have one more sensor, which is for uh, taking the pattern of electricity. So every machine has an electric input. And if we put the sensor at the back of a machine, take the electricity and analyze it, we can actually find out what the machine is doing. For example, here we are talking about a coffee machine. It is making macchiato, it is making cappuccino, that sensor will be able to tell you exactly what it is doing just by analyzing with AI the pattern of the electricity. So we have covered a lot of sensors, a lot of robots, and uh, only by utilizing all these technology, then we can actually uh, deploy the very complicated factories in Hong Kong because there are so many labors, there are so many very tiny bits of stuff. Um, we, if we put too many people into the factories, it's gonna get dirty. Um, so we really, really need to look at more sensors, more robots in order to uh, actually get manufacturing back to reindustrialize Hong Kong. So. Let's uh, end there and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Boy. Uh, I think it's very exciting to know that you bring a lot of new technologies to Hong Kong, different sensors, right? And then 200 million US dollars. <laughs> That's very exciting. I think we move it to the next um, part is about the Q&A. Thank you. So I think the, next, uh, the first question will be uh, going to uh, Professor Liu. So Professor Liu, um, so there's a question about um, because you are coming from the academic, right? So the people want to know more about the future. So what do you think will be the development you see in the future of robot together with computing network or maybe with AI, whatever? So what do you see about the forward-looking car robot development, Professor? Um, so AI itself is a, a kind of an enabling technology. You cannot uh, just consider AI as a standalone industry. AI is not a standalone industry, but it's a more uh, enabling technology so that can, um, uh, in a way, to use the data, uh, for example, some data driven uh, method, use the data to, uh, to help uh, machines to better understand the, the, the world. Uh, so that uh, the machine can have better interaction uh, with the board. So for the future, uh, AI uh, working as enabling technology can uh, better uh, relieve the, the labors from human and uh, also to uh, help increase the efficiency of the existing uh, works uh, in, the, in, the current, uh, in the current situation. Um, so, General AI is, um, um, you cannot say that AI can do uh, everything for you. Um, at least that's the current, uh, current moment. Uh, it has its own limitations. Uh, so uh, we still need to balance our expectation and how the technology uh, can, to which level the technology can, can reach. So. Thank you, Professor. So um, maybe the next question I'm going to Roy. Um, I think this is top, after your presentation, I think a couple of things, right? So one, one is about the AI robotics. The other is about communication, particularly in Hong Kong or China, we've got the 5G. And then um, your, your application will be the industry, right? So, so to combine them all together, so the question is how can the AI and robotic company adopt 5G for the industry manufacturing in Hong Kong or maybe in China? So any, any insight you can 
share with us? Yes, we have waited for 5G for a long time. We have <laughs> waited 30 years and now it's finally came. And what we can do about it is, um, as, you, as you know nowadays, um, Microsoft Words or uh, the, uh, a lot of functions are all put on the cloud. Mm -hmm. They are no longer installed in your computer. Right. But in the industrial world, we have the PLC right next to the machines all the time. Why couldn't we make it onto a cloud before? Because we did not have 5G. Now we are talking about the ability to put all the program in the cloud and then remotely move these machines, give it commands line by line, and it will just uh, carry out the, uh, perform the task you wanted to do. So with this technology, we are talking about a factory mm -hmm. does not need all the machines they need. So there is a CNC machine, there is a pressing machine. There are so many machines that they need to own before. Mm -hmm. Now they are actually, uh, they, they are capable of having a distributed factories. Mm -hmm. So I have a process, I might need to make something uh, with all these process pressing, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the drilling. Now I mm -hmm. can send one task to one factory, the other task to the other factories. And then finally, they can just send me the final product. So this is a very new ecology. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I, I think it's the, the, um, the uh, segregation of work. Right, so it yes. can be done uh, yes. by the 5G. That's very interesting. Um, the next question is to uh, Albert. So um, given that I've seen a lot of different cases that you've been doing in Hong Kong. So the question is about how can you enhance the robot technology adoption in Hong Kong? So, yeah. Thank you for the question. So first of all, uh, adoption always means ROI, return over investment, which means that uh, it's always come to a point that where economy of scale makes sense. And in terms of uh, today's topic, adoption of robotics in construction definitely would need a lot of integration with government bodies like Science Park or like construction department as well as the university because all this kind of usage would need to be localized, adopting local uh, legitimacy or regulatory kind of uh, areas. And what we have done uh, for the past, uh, I, I would say the past few months, that we have started a lot of discussion with universities as well as actual practical demonstration in the adoption. Hopefully that will be uh, making a lot of uh, uh, in inspiration to the construction industry over how to make use of robots, which is actually a really new question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maybe I hand it over to Hashibasan for some other question for other speaker. Okay, thank you, Andy. Um, um, there's another question for Albert um, about the construction industry. Um, the, um, the audience wants to ask you about how you see the future of the construction industry in 10 years time or in 50 years time using all the robotics and AI technology. Can you answer it for us? Yes, um, thank you. For how constructions are being, uh, I would say, seen in the future. I, we can see that the aging problem is happening to every country in the whole world. And all this kind of manual work definitely will be replaced by using new technology because there will not be enough supply to sustain such kind of repetitive and must, you need a strong body to move parts away here and there. All this kind of work definitely we need a tool to um, replace the gap between the supply of labor force. And robots definitely is one of the way. Just like what Roy said or Crystal said or, and all our panelists said, making all our parts remotely definitely is one of the uh, most common adoption in terms of robotics somewhere else, not on site. And also on the regular basis or on site labor, we will also be using robotic as a tool to help them move, help them build, and people can be much more efficient and less labor intensive while in making a construction complete. That is what I see in the uh, 10 years, not necessarily to be 50 years. Right? 
Thank you, Albert. Um, maybe Crystal, do you have anything to add to Albert? Because you, have, you also mentioned about the construction industry in Hong Kong. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So uh, the reason that we try to adopt more uh, robotics technology in construction is uh, because we really want to recruit more young people uh, to get into the industry. As you know, uh, if just stay with the existing uh, uh, situation, most of the workers are going to be tested. So why not we have uh, tried to uh, make the whole construction industry to become another image, which is to uh, incorporate the robotics technology in it, so that even though the young people will be interested to work in this field of work. And at the same time, uh, no matter it's a construction industry council or the Hong Kong government, they are putting on a lot of funding to support the end user, which means that if any construction company, uh, they would like to adopt the technology, uh, the CIC or the government will provide funding to them, which means that uh, uh, they are lowering the barrier uh, in order for technology adoption. So we do hope that uh, at least we could try to lower the um, uh, age group of uh, workers from 15 years old, let's say uh, down to 40 or even 40 years old in the next 10 to 20 years time. Okay, thank you. Um, I have two questions for Crystal. One is a very practical one. Um, it's like um, how um, Hong Kong Science Park and tenants can participate in the Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation Technology Park. And is there programs for existing or potential um, science park um, tenants for that? Uh, yeah, this is a very good question and many people are already asking for uh, over a year. But uh, I would say that uh, there is no particular program being announced yet. But uh, another one is uh, for Hong Kong Science Park. We, are, we have already set up an office in Shenzhen, which means that uh, in the future, if you are a tenant in the Science Park in Hong Kong, you could also enjoy or set up your office in Shenzhen more easily. So I think this is the first step that how we have uh, one science park in two regions. So for the Hong Kong and Shenzhen Innovation Technology Park, uh, because they are also in our uh, direct board of directors. So actually both Shenzhen and Hong Kong government are right now uh, uh, designing which kind of program that we uh, do we really need to introduce to the companies. And one uh, potential uh, thing is the um, uh, people. So for example, if uh, people in Shenzhen, they would like to work within the uh, Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation Technology Park, actually they don't need to apply for the visa or the working visa right now. So this is to ease the way that uh, how companies could set up uh, their uh, uh, labs or uh, R&D center within the two regions. Thank you very much. Another question is that um, how, how can Hong Kong leverage its niche for companies to tap into manufacturing industry in China? I think it's a bit related to the first question, but could you answer that for us? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I think the Hong Kong government uh, has been putting a lot of effort and support to the innovation and technology industry uh, in the past five years. So uh, for this kind of support, not only uh, the funding, but also how that uh, the government is adopting the uh, technology from companies as well. So as you know, uh, many companies from overseas, it's not easy to get into ch the China market because they need some time to work on the localization and customization. So in Hong Kong, no matter for the legal system, for the taxation, for the people, and also for the funding, it is a very good environment for uh, easy landing. So this is one niche that I think our overseas companies could leverage in order to get into the bigger market in China. And at the same time, we could also leverage the proximity of Hong Kong to the manufacturing base within the Greater Bay Area, which means that you can keep your design R&D and even the IP within Hong Kong, but you could easily do the manufacturing in China and all these logistics are already there. And the whole supply chain, no matter you are getting things from uh, Europe, US, uh, Japan, or somewhere else, you could easily pass through Hong Kong custom. And that's why I think all these uh, those good benefit uh, those benefits for companies to leverage Hong Kong. 
Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is for Ronald. Um, I think it's a, you have talked about this already in your presentation a bit, but maybe um, the you know audience want to know a little bit more in detail. Um, the question is, what role can Hong Kong, mainland, and Japan take in the R and D and also business development of AI and like robotics and other cutting edge technologies? And also, what kind of collaboration can be pursued for better technology and business development? Okay, thank you for your question. Um, to answer it, uh, in terms of uh, R&D, probably I think uh, uh, the mainland, Hong Kong and Japan, uh, each of uh, them has the advantage. Uh, for example, uh, in Japan, uh, actually I had work uh, for Japanese companies uh, for almost 20 years. I'm the guy to talk about uh, Japanese company and Japanese culture. And, and I think that uh, Japanese company has a very good uh, quality system. So uh, uh, every people all over the world, they have a confidence about the quality of uh, Japanese uh, quality. And so it's because they have a very good uh, control or uh, internal uh, monitoring or on this system. And we, we have to utilize for them uh, because, you know, uh, for doing the new technologies is not only a, a, a research, uh, but we have to consider about uh, whether the product can be uh, realized in the market, uh, whether the product can be launched. Okay, so this is the advantage for uh, Japan. And for uh, mainland, uh, of, of course, we all understand uh, the manufacturing. Uh, they have a world class manufacturing plant, uh, and also uh, they have uh, plenty of uh, uh, labor or space for the uh, testing as well, uh, especially for AI. Uh, even though uh, uh, AI uh, product is developed, but, uh, it has it had to be uh, test or uh, to, to do more uh, uh, demonstration or POC uh, unless uh, until they can launch to the market. So uh, that's why uh, mainland is uh, uh, where we have a large uh, advantage to do it. Uh, for Hong Kong, I can say uh, as a, the characters of uh, Hong Kong people, uh, we, we should do the project management. So uh, for example, in the previous uh, uh, project that I worked in uh, Sovereign and uh, local Hong Kong company, actually uh, I was the project management for this uh, JP discussion. So uh, Hong Kong people has the uh, execution ability and actually uh, we have passion to do it. So, um, so uh, about the collaboration uh, between uh, product development and uh, technology and business development. I, I, I don't say that is the technology, but I say that is important development because uh, technology is too, um, how do I say, too far away. Uh, it's just a kind of a technology, but uh, in terms, uh, we have to discuss between, uh, to relate between uh, business development, I, I should say important development and uh, business development. So um, probably I think that uh, uh, this, it is a chicken and egg, Question. So uh, we have we, we have to get a border first, or we have to know the market first. So uh, this is uh, always a debate between uh, sales and the border development team. So uh, I always uh, uh, believe that uh, without without knowing the market, without uh, uh, con uh, checking uh, or having to research with the end users, uh, what our border development is just a risk. It's just a gambling. So that's why uh, these two teams or two departments has to work very closely before they fix the product, before they have a, a project, uh, uh, define a poor, uh, new project. So that's my answer. Yeah. I have a one question to Professor Liu, because from the academic perspective, right, for the robot development, which part um, may be, uh, I'm a layman, right? Is that the component level or is the assembly of different top loss kind of sensor or whatever up together is important or the backend AI important? So what are the key part you think is important to make the robot to live forward, to make the robot to have a more uh, uh, um, a wider uh, business user case? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Uh, because you know the university uh, academic uh, can do only limited things, right? Uh, because uh, we can do publication in uh, certain areas, 
and so that at this uh, point from point to point, uh, for example, localization uh, precision right, or the uh, this localization in both indoor and outdoor. Uh, that's a one specific research topic. But if you only have localization, that's not a, a robot, right? You you for the robotic system, you need not only localization, but you also need the planning, uh, obstacle detection, and there you have the from electronics to, to electric uh, parts and the mechanical parts. So uh, finally, you need to assemble everything together to have a complete uh, robot system. So the uh, AI uh, can, can serve as a backbone, right? So if you don't have anything about uh, AI, uh, no concept about AI, then definitely it won't work. But if you only have the algorithms, um, that's that's not the uh, that's not, not, not that's not everything uh, about the robotic system. So uh, if you want to have a, a functionable uh, uh, robotic system, so uh, assembly or uh, just in a way so-called integration uh, technology uh, is also important. Uh, so from our research, uh, we try to put the robotic research into more like a practical uh, use cases. Uh, you can see in the videos I, I demonstrated uh, previously. So we can have a, um, a mobile uh, autonomous vehicle to, to do uh, to carry uh, the, the packages around, carry passengers around. Uh, that's the result of system integration. So, but when we talk about the key technologies, I can point out, uh, like some of the slides I can point out, uh, that's how we do the mapping, uh, that's how we do the, the detection. Um, so actually, it's, a, it's a, the integration is important for the final uh, application and the final product. And, but the, uh, it has to be built based on the uh, sufficient knowledge and the know-how about the AI uh, algorithms. Thank you. So I, I think um, today, right, I just close up. Um, um, I hope that uh, today we have the uh, speaker from the academic side, speaker from the uh, R&D infrastructure, which is from the science park, and also the company who actually make use of science park for further enhancement of their product. And also some company who um, do the modification with the product from Japan and then use, using the local company to enhance their product and also the industry manufacturing. Uh, I hope that can give you a favor about the how, what Hong Kong can offer. And then please feel free to reach out to the people in here on the screen, which is uh, myself, uh, Andy Wong from Invest Hong Kong, Hong Kong side, and also Jennifer. And also from Japan is Hashiba side, and also Nakata side, and also from Thailand as well. So, um, um, anything add from Hasuba Sa? No, um, actually, thank you everyone um, for the guest speakers for sharing your experience and all insights. It was very interesting. Actually, we are receiving voices from the attendees that they really enjoyed your presentations. And I hope like, you know, um, as Andy said, if you feel like you want to introduce your products to Hong Kong market or you're going to set up in Hong Kong, right now we have COVID-19, so it's a bit difficult to travel to Hong Kong, but um, we are here to support you to um, you know, prepare when you can go to Hong Kong and start your business. And also like if you are in Hong Kong to expand business in Hong Kong, we are here besides you. So please contact us anytime. Thanks. And also we have to thank you for two uh, simultaneous translator who's been working very hard to translate the slide and also to do the uh, simultaneous translation. And then with that the end and then go back to watch the Olympic games now. <laughs> thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> thank, thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.